Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, thank you as always for being here. I have some brand new Valentine's DIYs. So let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. All right, I have some um, items from the Dollar Tree here, as well as Dollar Tree, I think it's Dollar Tree Plus. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then this frame, I believe, is from Michael's. I had gotten it in a pack of a bunch of different size frames. I believe this one is 10 by 20. And I'm just trying to figure out the best way to approach this. I know exactly what I want to do. Just trying to figure out the how now. So I've got a piece of parchment paper here that I'm going to use to try to help me center everything. I, I know I have some odd ways of doing things, but I promise it turns out really, really well. I love this project. But um, once I've identified center by um, sight, I am going to lay out these little foam hearts. They're just foam covered in red glitter. If you're not a fan of glitter, you can certainly use other mediums. And now that I've got it kind of laid out in my heart shape, I'm just trying to see if I've got it um, centered. And I did have it really well centered from left to right, but it was a little low on the um, canvas. So I end up moving it up just slightly. Um, here I have my little um, ruler just checking to see if I've got everything in position now and then I went ahead and started gluing everything down just a little dab of my hot glue on each of these little hearts and then attaching them to the canvas I'm just being careful not to overdo it because I don't want there to be a lot of glue um, scooching out and visible I want these um, to just kind of be attached without any visible sign of how they're attached hopefully that's making sense but once I had those all on I was ready to try to figure out the rest of it so I did start in the center to ensure that everything would be centered if I started on the left or on the right and try to wake, make my way across I was I knew I was gonna have spacing issues so it was really important to me to start in the middle here I have my parchment paper again, and I'm gonna fold it in half once more to try to find a center between the edge of my canvas and the heart. And as you can see, I've got that really well centered and the parchment paper is a perfect size. Sorry about the chain rattling, Sammy is hanging out with me here. Um, but I wanted to make sure my hearts were all gonna be about the same size as well. So as you can see, I was using that initial heart and kind of tracing it with my parchment paper to get the um, uh, correct size for my other hearts. So I'm going to use this pattern um, to dictate the size of the other two hearts. Now, again, trying to figure out how to make sure that it's the right shape, right size, um, centered left and right top to bottom and so you can always tell what I'm thinking because I've got my little fingers tapping away but I did finally um, figure out that I could kind of pry that up I did want to try to see if I could follow the um, the I want to say design but the yeah I think you know what I'm talking about. Finally, I decided, you know what? Let me put it on the parchment paper, lay it down, and maybe it'll kind of mark it for me where it needs to be. And then I did the same thing with the top side. And Sammy is now knocking into the table. Um, but uh, this gave me an opportunity to apply the heart without having to try to figure out exactly where to apply it. <laughs> Hopefully I'm making sense. You can see what I'm doing here. But once I had it um, basically marked out with a thin layer of glue, I went back in and added more. Um, it was kind of hard to see there, I'm sure, on camera, but um, it was really easy for me to see in person where that glue was because it had a little bit of a sheen. So now I have my confetti glitter from the Dollar Tree that I'm applying here. This reminds me of that Easter kind of pinkish purple color. Um, if you think about those foil wrapped chocolate eggs, that's what these colors make me think of. And I pulled the, the pink one out and I'm using that for the heart. So just applied a whole bunch of it. 
I'm going to kind of press it down into the glue a little bit and making sure that everything is covered and that there aren't any gaps. And then I'll grab a piece of parchment paper and I will let the excess slide down off onto that that I can then put back into the little sleeve that it came in um, for the next time. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but this time I got smart. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply all of the glue, or at least a nice little layer of glue, to my template. I'll flip that over, apply it a little bit of pressure. There was some glue leakage there. I wanna make sure I didn't get that on the canvas, so I put another little piece of parchment paper down there. Um, but gonna just go ahead and tap that on. I'm trying not to press too hard because I don't want to squoosh outside the lines, so to speak. So I'm really just interested in marking where I need to apply the, um, the rest of the glue. Now for this heart, I know I'm gonna be using crushed decorative glass. So I am applying a heavier coat of my Mod Podge. You could also use school glue. It doesn't have to be Mod Podge, but um, I'm applying a heavier, thicker coat so that it will be more apt to holding on to the glass, which is going to be a lot heavier than that confetti I was using on the other side. Now, I wasn't sure how much of this I was going to need, and these little tubs um, don't hold a whole heck of a lot. So I started with the purple, and then I did end up having to use a few other colors. So I was just going in order of what I thought would be prettiest um, included here. So that was the purple first, and then I had like, it was a blue and purple kind of mixture. Then I had a rose gold, now I'm applying some red. Um, and then finally, I am gonna be um, applying just a plain gold. That's this one right here. Um, so they're all just kind of mixed together. If I had had a better idea of how much I was gonna need, maybe I would have done it differently and maybe I would have done like stripes or whatever else. But I actually love the way that this turned out. And I'm just making sure that it's all kind of in the heart shape. I am um, tucking that all in, pressing it down into the glue just to make sure that it's going to be adhered and have nice coverage. And I'll do the same thing, knocking the excess off onto the parchment. And it kind of revealed a different shaded heart when I did that because of all the colors that were underneath. And I think it looks so cool. So then I started to put it back in and then I noticed that there were some um, little gaps along the edges of the um, heart. So I just went back and outlined the whole outer edge, pressed that down, and then I went ahead and um, removed the excess again and got that all tucked away um, with the same process that I just used before. But I think this is so pretty. I'm gonna show it to you here in a second, but I would love to know what you think I absolutely love it. DIY number two. Okay, so I have a little Dollar Tree owl wood cutout. I pulled off that tag. Um, I should have pulled off the other one, but I will in a little bit. Now, um, I was showing you a bunch of little wooden cutouts. Those larger hearts obviously came in a pack with um, little uh, foam tape adhesive on it so I'm pulling those off. The smaller ones all came in a pack together. It was a whole bunch of different shaped of wood pieces that I've gotten from the Dollar Tree. It was a really great buy because I've been using those little pieces on all kinds of things. But I'm going to go ahead and give our little owl friend here a coat of my crimson chalk paint. Here I'm finally pulling off that label. I should have known that I was going to want to take that off in the first place but um, got that off and gave it two, no, one good coat of paint on both sides. 
while he was drying, I went ahead and painted all of the little um, hearts in my vintage Victorian pink. And then this is sunny porch that I'm doing the circles in. Once everything was dry, I went ahead and started trying to lay everything out and uh, just lined up all of my little hearts to get things the way that I wanted to kind of <clears throat> make the, uh, the body, I guess, of the owl. So we're, gonna, we're decorating him here and creating his form and his shape. I was trying to decide which way I wanted his little wings to go and finally settled on that way. And I've got my little googly eyes I'm gonna be using for his eyes. And one thing I've always found with the googly eyes, when I use hot glue, for whatever reason, it freezes the little googly inside. And I, I don't really know why, but I'm just messing with his beak, trying to decide how I wanna do that. I realized that I had his eyes way too close together. He's so stinking cute. So. I'm going to go ahead and um, apply his eyeball and because they do end up freezing, I think it must melt the back of it and end up sticking to whatever the googly part is on the inside. That's the only thing I can figure out um, because of the heat, but um, I did want to make sure I adhered them to the backing before I committed to adhering the backing to the owl's body or head um, because I wanted to make sure that I positioned the eyes to look the way that I wanted them. I didn't want them to be cross-eyed or anything like that. So got that taken care of and then I went ahead and started applying all of the little wood pieces including his eyes here um, to his body the way that I have them placed. So just went through one at a time, got those all adhered and I'll speed through this so you don't have to watch me put down every single little one. This is the last piece. And I'm thinking he's looking super cute, but I did feel like he was missing something. There was just something more that he needed. So I went back to my stash and I grabbed a couple of more of those little heart shapes and I gave them a coat of, this is called um, salmon coral or coral salmon. I always get it mixed up. I think it's salmon coral. I thought maybe his little beak could go with the salmon coral as well um, and I'm applying them but thinking that the color isn't quite what I want it to be it's blending a little bit too much into um, that red background so for the beak I went ahead and grabbed my mustard chalk paint and I'm gonna go ahead and just go over that carefully now that everything is adhered and then I used Java chalk paint on his little ears and I was happier with that um, I did actually end up using a little bit of the Java on his beak here in a second just to kind of create a little bit of shading and shadow um, along the edges and hopefully give it um, a little bit of a sense of roundness and not being quite so flat that you can see. And it's more like dry brushing than anything else. I'm not applying a lot of paint, but just a little bit to the edges there. And I think he is super, super cute. Once he was dry, I flipped him over. I've got a little piece of twine or jute cord. I'm not really sure what you'd refer to this one as. Um, I had taken it off another project recently and had it in my stash. I try to um, reuse things as much as I can just to, um, to save waste and applied that with some hot glue. So I have a little hanger for him. And he, once that was all cool, he was ready to hang up. number three okay I have a whole bunch of different hearts from my stash lots of bits and pieces plus this little um, corrugated sign corrugated I think that's the right word and um, yeah there's another word for it with the type of metal it is that I always forget but at any rate I've got these little um, hearts this 
keychain heart was in a pack i think of three maybe four but i had three of them in my stash and it was already open so i wasn't sure how many it came with originally um the other one was a pack of eight from um it was supposed to be like a garland i think and then you could see that the red heart came from a pack of i think it was more than a dozen um various hearts and colors and shapes the medium-sized heart I painted with the Adirondack white, and then that's my vintage Victorian pink that I was using. I grabbed out my twine, and I was creating a heart to put on the front of this sign, and also to which I was going to attach the hearts, but I decided it was a little too thin. It wasn't, it didn't have enough substance. So I set it aside, knowing that I wanted to use it for my hanger, and I grabbed my jute cord, which is a little heavier, so creating just a regular tie your shoelace bow, and I'm going to attach that to my corrugated heart here with some hot glue. Just going to place a little bit of glue right there in the divot and drop that knot right on top of it. And it hid the glue perfectly. It couldn't have been better. So went ahead and got that secured and then I was going to be ready to attach my little hearts to the design. So trimmed that off and I'm going to glue this one end to the back of my little red heart. Just using a little bit of hot glue there, tucking that in and then I'll apply a little bit more hot glue over the top just to kind of create a seal for it. And then I'll let that just rest there once I was satisfied that it wasn't going to pop off and let it cool the rest of the way. So now once my painted hearts were done, and it's already bothering me that I didn't finish painting the back of that pink heart, I'm going to have to go back and, and do that. It's where I was holding it, and I just didn't bother to, to do it. And yeah, true to, true to my nature, it's, it's already bothering me. So rest assured, I'll go back and, and finish that, even though you won't really see it. I'll pop it off later and, and do it. But... Um, I went ahead and tied a little bow. I wasn't crazy about that look because I wanted to have the other um, little tail for the bow. So I undid that. I'm just going to tie it onto here um, in the regular way, making sure that I've got it at the length that I want it. I'm going to trim that off and tuck the end into that little hole with some hot glue so that it doesn't come undone because I only did the first part of the knot. I I tied it once. I didn't tie it a second time to actually knot it. So that's what's actually going to keep it secure. And then that end that I cut off um, took me a couple of tries here, but I went ahead and tied another little shoelace bow. It was trying to come unraveled, so I had to kind of twist it up a little bit so that it would stay properly together. But got that bow tied, and then I'm going to tuck that right on top of that little hole there to camouflage the hole and bring that all together. I love this. I think it's so super sweet. But now I'm going to be ready to attach my um, hanger. Now there is already a hanger built into the back of this, so I'm going to loop my twine right through there. And I'm going to create a longer loop on this to use for my hanger and I'm going to be using some beads to decorate this. So before I do that I'm just going to go ahead and tie this off and pull it nice and tight so that it'll be nicely secured. I did actually end up going back and adding some hot glue to that as well just to keep it in place and for some extra security so to speak. So grabbed my beads. I have um, white gray, a black and white buffalo check. There are some black beads in there as well. I decided I did want to knot it because I don't want the beads sliding back behind the metal sign part. Um, but I didn't end up using any of the black beads. You certainly could. I just decided that I wanted to have a little bit of a softer look and I didn't want the, um, the solid black um, to be part of this. So I alternated the white, the buffalo check, and the gray. And I did that a couple of times, and then I ended up finishing off with the white. Once I had that on there, I knotted it once again right at the top. And that was that. Now, when I did um, hang it up, it, I felt like it was kind of limp. Um, I wanted there to be a little bit more of a bounce 
in the way that the hearts looked on here. It's the only way I can describe it. So I used my little pop dot tape. Um, it's basically foam tape that's double-sided. Um, and I applied it to the back of my hearts and then applied that to the sign um, in the place where I wanted it. And just pulling the backing off of there, making sure I have enough of the adhesive dots on there and pressing that down. And now it is finally the way I want it. But let me know what you think of this one. Now it's time for a shout out time out. Beautiful Lorraine, I love these. They were inspired by some trees I had done and they turned out great and wonderful Jamie. Such beautiful holiday decor, I love it. And great Rose, I absolutely love these. They make my heart happy. I would love to give you a shout out as well. If you have interest, just send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number four. Okay, this is gonna be quick and simple. I'm calling it simple, not necessarily easy because I struggled with it a little bit, but I am sure that you can learn from my challenges and make it much easier on yourself. So I started out with a balloon thinking that this would be a good way to create my form and thinking that my balloon was going to be a little more pliable than it actually was and a little bit more uh, cooperative than it actually was. Um, this material that I'm using with it is something I got off of Amazon. It's essentially like a paper wrapped wire. Um, and it just has this really nice and natural um, look to it, almost like rattan, I want to call it. But um, I'm just trying to twist this off on the bottom of the balloon. As you can see, it's like rolling away. And I, it was it, it was a struggle trying to get it to do what I was envisioning I wanted it to do. I'm essentially trying to cinch the balloon a bit in the middle um, to create a heart shape. I'm thinking that this could be my form that I wrap this all around and then I could pop the balloon and have my heart form, right? Yeah. Um, the balloon wasn't cooperating and I was just getting frustrated and eventually, right about now, I decided that this just wasn't going to work and I opted to do something different. So here I am about to give up. Well, I guess not quite because I can be a little determined. So I started to wrap it around, wrapped it around a little bit on the other side. And then I was like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't going to do it. So took it all off and then um, started to try to just do it free form. Now in hindsight, if I had started with a smaller heart shape, um, that would have just ultimately ended up in the middle of my form. It might have been a little bit easier, but instead I'm starting with a large heart shape. Or even if I had started with maybe more of like a ball shape and then formed the heart around that ball shape, there are probably a few different ways that I could have tackled this. Um, but of course I went right for the size and shape that I wanted. Um, so I'm just kind of wrapping it around itself, trying to anchor the um, the wire in certain places to maintain the shape and the form that I'm trying to go for. Um, and then I just started wrapping it. Well, I have to admit, once I started wrapping it, it became much easier, which is why I'm thinking if you were to start with a smaller shape and work your way outward, it might be a little bit easier to manage. But that's why I do this, right? So I can figure it out and then I can share with you what not to do <laughs> and advise on what might work better. But um, just gonna continue to wrap this around and around. And you're gonna see here in just a second, as I get more of the material in place, 
as I wrap and wrap and wrap, it's going to start holding its form and its shape much more easily and readily and happily. So wrapping consistently and it honestly is going to be done in about 30 seconds. So you can see it already starting to take more form. I'm struggling with it less and just wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. And this is something that you could use as a shelf sitter on a bookcase, um, in a bowl with other um, bowl filler. It's just, you could hang it on the wall. There are a lot of different things that you could do with this little piece. It's so rustic and natural looking um, that when I get it done, I just think it is a nice little touch and addition um, to any kind of decor that you might have um, for Valentine's Day or even all year round. If you just happen to like the shape of it and the look of it, you could certainly um, keep it out on your bookcase or wherever it is that you like to decorate with this type of thing. So here you can see it's become much easier at this point. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off and tuck that down in and then I'll just work with it a little bit more to continue to um, ensure that I've got the form that I want and that all of the little um, strands for lack of a better term are positioned where I want them um, and that it's not going to start to to fall apart on me basically I want to make sure everything is nice and secure and in place and that is honestly it but I'm going to show you a picture of it here. Let me know what you, uh, what you think of this one. DIY number five. All right, Quaker Oats. This is an empty container and I am going to make a vase with it. <laughs> so let's see what we can do here. I went ahead and cut down a piece of my parchment paper. I am trying to be a little bit more conservative with, uh, with my materials because I feel like I go through this stuff pretty quickly. Um, so I just cut out a square of that to use um, to protect my surface from the paint. This is that salmon coral chalk paint that I used a little bit earlier on our owl friend. Um, I'm going to give this two good coats of paint just to make sure that I've got all of the design on this canister um, covered up. It probably would be okay with a single coat, to be honest, um, because of what we're going to be doing. but. I went ahead and just made that double coat just in case. So once that was done, I went ahead and helped it out with some drying um, with my heat gun just to kind of speed up my process. And then I grabbed my Mod Podge. You could also use school glue for this, but I have a big tub of Mod Podge that I opted to use. And I'm putting on a pretty liberal coat. I had a little bit of... Uh, a glob there that I took out um, but put a pretty liberal coat all over the canister and once I had that covered up um, I went ahead and helped it dry again a little bit now if any of you are familiar with doing crackle paint and you've done it yourself I would love some pointers and tips and I hope you'll leave me a comment because I was feeling like I should have altered my brush strokes with this whole process because um, here I am coming in with my Adirondack white chalk paint and as you can see I'm going up and down on the canister perpendicular this entire time. I did it with the first coat with the um, salmon coral, I did it with the Mod Podge, and now I did it with the Adirondack White. And I think it impacted the way my crackles take place here. So I've got my paint on, I'm using the heat gun again. This is going to create the crackle with the semi-wet glue underneath there and then the um, the wet um, Adirondack white on top there. So you can see the crackles starting to come and I do have some that are going um, at a diagonal or horizontally but for the most part these are going in the same direction as my brush strokes. 
So I'm thinking next time I try this, I need to try alternating my brush strokes, or maybe I should have dabbed the paint on that versus um, using that large paintbrush. I don't honestly know for certain. I will have to test it out. Um, but perhaps you all have some tips and tricks you can share with me that uh, would make my learning process go a little bit faster. Um, so appreciate anything you can share in that regard. But just gonna go ahead and continue to get that dry. And then I was trying to get it to cool down. I did have a few little bubbles there. And this was making me think of tree bark. So I'm actually kind of happy that it turned out this way because it's giving me some ideas of other things I might want to try to do um, using this technique and doing it the same way that I just did, even though I want to learn how to do it the right way. So once that was um, cool enough to my liking and I was happy with uh, moving on with the project, I went ahead and started looking for a ribbon because I want to cover up the top edge of this so I have my white ribbon there that wasn't gonna work for that I pulled out a pink ribbon it was just too bubblegum pink but then I found this other ribbon that I had in my stash from the Dollar Tree it's like a rose gold color and it was perfect with that salmon coral tone so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the top of the canister with this by applying just a thin coat of my glue my um, hot glue I am letting half of the ribbon dangle over the edge okay so I'm only applying the first half of the ribbon to the canister and then it's going to be wrapped around into the inside of the canister so I'm letting half of it be glued to the outside of the canister and half of it is hanging over once I got that wrapped all the way around I trimmed it off about an inch long of what I needed tucked that under and I'm going to overlap the starting and the ending with the ribbon tucked under just to have a nice clean edge to finish that off and then I'll go about getting the ribbon all tucked in. So I'm just going to run a line of glue along the inside of the canister and wrap that ribbon around and tuck it down in and I'll do that all the way around the inside of the canister until it's completely secured. Now I am going to take that white ribbon and create a bow, but I want to make sure that my bow isn't slipping and sliding all over the place. So for my own personal sanity, I am going to be tacking it down with some glue in a couple of places. You'll see that in just a second. So I first figured out how much ribbon I wanted, and now I'm going to go ahead and, um, and get it situated here. So I want to make sure that it's centered on the ribbon tacking a little teeny bit of glue, applying that right over top of the initial ribbon that I put down. Um, and I'm just leaving a little bit of an edge of that, um, I wanted to say copper, it is kind of a coppery color, the rose gold ribbon, leaving a little bit of an edge to be seen. Um, and then just having the white ribbon uh, kind of layered over top of it. So once I had that tacked down in those three little places, I went ahead and started tying my bow. Now, I don't know why it is, but every time I try to tie a bow, to get it the way I want it, I always end up having to tie it upside down. I don't know why I didn't just go right away to trying to tie it upside down. I figured, okay, let me try it one more time, looping it, you know, the opposite way of what I normally do. Yeah, no, it's still like twisty and sideways. <laughs> so here I am upside down bow tying it the way I would normally tie my shoes and it turns out perfect why upside down I don't know I don't know what I do wrong when I'm trying to tie bows right side up clearly I'm backwards um, but I just went ahead and futzed with it until I had it the way I wanted it and then I dovetailed the ends this particular ribbon because of that mesh in the middle it's a little bit um, of a challenge to dovetail if i'm quite honest trimming the the ends of it but we persevered and managed and got her done so once i had that set i was ready to add my flowers i just did a really quick bouquet with a bunch of different colored roses that i had in my stash and futzed with them until i got them the way that i wanted them um, I didn't cut any of these apart. I just bent over the ends to get them to the right length, tucked them in, and just kind of wrapped them around each other and, and positioned them um, the way that I wanted them.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the projects, please remember to give me a big thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know which one was your favorite. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.